method is is uh, calorimetric and what we are trying to do we are trying to find concentration for unknown solution based on the intensity of the color that it produces so the product or the reactant or the active ingredient or what we are trying to measure the concentration it should cause formation of a color that has the maximum um, absorbance at a certain wavelength different color they have the maximum uh, absorbance or at the best um, wavelength which is known as the lambda max so that lambda max is already determined for this experiment the instrument looks like this uh, machine and i have the the equipment the instrument live right here uh, we are going to uh, to use it set it up and and use it. Uh, if we look at the uh, second page of this experiment, so basically it's a, it's a titration method or measurement of the uh, uh, measurement for uh, concentration. So what we are going to do at this point, uh, we are going to just look at the formula. The formula that we are looking at uh, for that follows the Beer's law, it shows absorption of the light by the solution. It depends on some variables we can keep the uh, the uh, va the value or the the pathway for the light which is the one centimeter here um, that depends on the cuvette that we are using so if you are using this type of cuvette it's going to be kept as one centimeter there um, so it's a constant number um, this is a uh, coefficient the epsilon is a coefficient, which is, again, a constant number. The C is the concentration of the solution. So basically, concentration of the solution is directly related to the absorption. The higher the concentration, the higher the absorption. That is the idea that we are going to, to use. And um, in, order to, in order to use this technique, we are going to first build a, a calibration curve. The calibration curve is going to be built based on um, concentration, known concentration of our solution. So basically, we, we know already we have few we make or prepare, uh, three, four, five, the more the better, uh, but we are going to make at least like four of them. Um, the uh, So we have at least like four point graphs, so the more number of points, probably better. Uh, we are going to uh, to make our solution different concentration. We are going to use the machine and determine the absorption, measure either transmittance or the absorption. When we have these values, we are going to then uh, plot the graph. The graph that we plot for absorption versus concentration is known as the calibration curve. Let's say we have an unknown compound. That unknown com compound, if it's going to have like 0.42, uh, absorption uh, then we extrapolate this uh, number uh, a line we draw a perpendicular line, line from the absorption to cross the the best fitted line or the calibration curve and then from that uh, we are going to draw a perpendicular line to concentration line um, the x values and we find the value for concentration of the unknown uh, unknown solution so that is more of the more of the the theory. Again, the purpose of the experiment, my performing this experiment, is to be able to uh, teach this class uh, remotely. So I'm not uh, teaching the class. I'm just performing the experiment. But I have to explain why I'm what I'm doing. Um, and uh, when I perform this experiment, I'm going to perform it in a way that you would uh, record your data. Uh, you record your data values, and based on the data value, you are going to um, be able to finish up and complete your data sheet to turn in as an assignment. Label dry Erlenberg flask A to E. I have already five. I have five Erlenberg flasks here. Um, they must be dry because we don't want to change the volume. Volume has to be um, accurately uh, measured. And one of the best devices um, in the lab to measure the volume 
accurately is burette or pipette, but burette is more practical because we could use different increments of the of the volume. So we are going to uh, follow the table, the table that is provided in the procedure, to fill up the the flask. Follow to the flask A. A flask A is going to serve as a blank. Why are we using blank? Because we want to make sure that our, uh, our, for better purpose of the use of the instrument, we want to make sure that we have a reference um, to, to refer to as the zero absorption because this is not going to have the active ingredient. So it's not going to have basically iron three plus. So whatever the measurement for this is going to be zero absorption Ideally, uh, or the machine needs to be calibrated for zero absorption. Then we make the other four solutions. We're going to calibrate for reading of those three. Instrument is on already. The wavelength, I set it up. I'm going to show you because it tells you in the procedure. So I want you to know what is done and how it's going to be uh, performed the, this part of the experiment. Uh, we can change the nanometers, we can increase or decrease, and it's saying that set it up at 480. I just set it up at 480, but I'm showing how to uh, have to go up and down here um, to make it 480. And then it says ATC, concentration, absorption, or translation button, uh, to use this to change it to the percent T. So if you press it, it can go to concentration, it can go to absorption or the percent T, and we are keeping at the percent T. For Next step, uh, we are going to add um, the five milliliter of the KSCN to the class B uh, for five minutes worth for five minutes. Okay, so we are going to set up do not add the KSC. So everything needs to be added to the everything needs to be added to each flask using the table. And the only item that we are not going to add is the, the potassium cyanide. Why are we adding the potassium cyanide? Because if we add the potassium cyanide, it's going to start, the reaction is going to start. And since we have to time it for five minutes, then if we start and I try to fill up all five flasks here. It's going to take a lot more than the five minutes and it's not going to be um, proper comparison of the concentration because each of these flasks needs to stay five minutes before we can uh, we can measure it. So for A, I don't need any iron, so I'm adding nitric acid. Why should I add nitric acid and how much? Five milliliters of nitric acid. When you add nitric acid, let's say you have iron that Iron could be like iron, it could be iron 2 plus, it could be iron 3 plus. So what it does, what you, you when you add nitric acid, what it does is going to uh, make all iron change to iron 3 plus. So when you are measuring, you are measuring iron 3 plus. So you want to make sure that your uh, the iron is in iron 3 plus format. I'm going from 29 to... 34 to add the five milliliters. Okay. So I have my solution A prepared. B, one milliliter of the iron. So I'm going to add one milliliter of iron. One milliliter of iron. This will be four milliliters of nitric acid. So I go from 34 to 38. And KSCN, we have to add it later. So A and B ready. C, two milliliter of the iron. I'm going from 19 to 21 now. Three milliliters of nitric acid. Go from 38 to 41. Then we add. C is ready. B, three milliliters of the three milliliters. So I go from 21 to 24 of iron. Three milliliters of iron. 
and two milliliters of the nitric acid. Okay. E, four milliliters of iron, going from four, 24 to 28, four milliliters, and one milliliter of nitric acid. And one milliliter of nitric acid, going from 43 to 40. Flasks are ready with the exceptions to KSCN. KSCN, we are not, we are not adding because as soon as we add, we have to time it for five uh, minutes. Um, going to add one, it's 157. I'm adding the KSCN, five milliliters. We have five minutes for B to be ready. Just setting up for five minutes. And while we are waiting for the five minutes, we should be able to work with sample A following the procedure. We are going to fill up QVET with the solution A. Press the 100%. So we are going to calibrate the machine with solution A, because solution A had no iron. So if solution, if this machine is going to read the read the solution A with 100%, that means it's calibrating the machine that for others is going to read the, the change in color, how much color or what is the intensity of the color that has been um, generated. And based on that, the the absorption is going to be higher. The more color, the higher the absorption of the light. So smaller value for percent transmittance. So we're done with A. We're waiting for B, 57. And I think if I write these down, I can manage to do two or three hours. For A, I have 100%. For B, I started at 157. Uh, for C, I'm going to start at uh, 2. I have to wait to 205. So let me start with the C. I have my solution for C also set up at 2 o'clock. I have to wait for 205. I can test my solution. C. This is just being more efficient. I could have just stayed with the B, finish five minutes, and then start with the C, wait five minutes. But this way, if I can keep track of my numbers and the waiting time, the time lapse, I can I can uh, manage to. I have two more minutes. I'm not going to be able to um, do that. I probably can start at 2 or 2 for sample D. Two with my sample D started at 202. My sample B is going in at 203. So I have to get ready to put my sample in into test tube. It's actually not test tube, it's called a cuvette. It has a special mark on it, it's a special brand of a test tube. And these cuvettes, they are special glass that doesn't have absorption of the of the light and they are better quality of the test tubes. Okay, two or three. I need to read the sample B. When I read the sample B, I record the number 91.7%. Uh, okay, 91.7% percent and okay it doesn't change good done with sample b my sample c should go in at 205 i have two minutes i can start with my sample e 20 i'm going to start at 204 so 204 sample e should go in at 209 now, my sample C should go in at 205, so I have to be ready with my sample C as soon as the clock ticks the 
205. I can place my sample C in. Just have to make sure that it's clean because I touched it. So we are using ChemWipe uh, to clean. And ChemWipe is just a, a special type of paper. It's not since uh, you're not here, I just have to show you what he's talking about when you say ChemWipe. So 205, 205 sample C is going in and the flask is going out. It's 5.3. 5.3%. Okay. My sample B is going in at 207. So I just have to wait now because I don't have other um, standards. I'm just going to look further to see what else I need to. Okay. 207 D is going in. So I'm going to start getting ready. If the sample is in the test tube or is in the flask, it should have the same time for intensity of the color, basically. So it's okay to, to pour it into test tube and wait until it's 207. As long as I don't read it and I wait until 207, it should be fine if it's in the flask or is in the cuvette. Okay, it's 207, so I can read my Example 207 B is 77.3. Sample E is next one, and that's the time that I need for that is a 209, five minutes time. So I'm going to make my unknown. I have one minute time. I'm trying to see if I can make my unknown A. Unknown A, 209. Let me finish my calibration. And we record the number, 74.8%. Going to make my unknown A. For unknown A, we need the five milliliters of the unknown solution. So, going to start from. Okay, watching me. Okay, going to start from 22 and go down to 27. My cyanide, I have 35. Going to down to 40. We look at the time, it's 210. To wait for five minutes until 215 in order to make the unknown. So unknown A, I like to write it down so I can get the um, Two ten to fifteen. Unknown B. Get unknown B. It looks like there's high concentration of the iron in the unknown A. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the concentration is because I didn't look for the unknown. But whatever it is, we are following the procedure correctly and we are going to write what My unknown A and B, ready. Unknown A, I started at 210. And I have to wait to 2.15 to use the unknown for unknown B, 2.13 to 2.18. Which one has higher concentration? 
So this should have higher absorption also. A has higher concentration, B has lower concentration. Looks like A is out of the range of our calibration also. It's, uh, it's too dark compared to all the solutions that we had already. So in your calibration curve, it might be like outliner out of higher than every other sample that you have. The formula to convert the percent T that we are measuring into to absorption is in step six of the procedure. Okay, A equals log of 100 divided by percent T. That's the one that you are using for all of these values. The uh, percent T that I'm going to report uh, to you to um, convert it first before you plot your calibration curve. Okay, 215, and I'm going to use my unknown, A. Thirty two point three percent T. And for unknown B, I have to wait to two eighteen. Two more minutes. So you when you have your calibration curve, you have to look for the concentration and use the, the calibration curve in order to find the concentration for the unknown A or unknown B. The uh, instrument, if it's calibrated today, it needs to be calibrated next day. So all the uh, solutions that uh, are measuring for standard curve uh, if we are performing the experiment today, we cannot use this standard curve tomorrow for a new set of the unknown. So everything has to be at the same um, time range. So during the same um, lab setting, same day, the machine needs to be calibrated, standard uh, curve needs to be um, plotted, and then you use the, you measure the absorption for unknown using the curve to find the concentration. So if you're getting close to 218, just going to fill up the test tube with the sample B and wait for the time. 67.3. Okay. Um, I am going to, I'm not supposed to, but I'm going to Record these numbers for you. A gives 100%. B, you already know what A and B is because you have the table. B, the value for B was 91.7%. Value for C is 85.3%. Value for D is 77.3%. Value for E value for E is 74.7%, unknown A value was high probably they made a concentrated solution 32.3 percent and unknown B uh, 
unknown B, 67.3%. Okay, perfect. We are done with the experiments.